Today we're going to be painting a koi fish. Uh, you just need your basic watercolor supplies, um, clean water, a couple brushes, a pencil, an eraser, and your paints, of course. Um, now the first step here is to draw the fish very lightly with pencil. We don't want to go too dark because ideally these, these pencil strokes will not show up in the final artwork. Uh, so just really lightly create an outline of your fish, create an outline of the fins, the tail. You can put a little bit of detail in there like the eyes, uh, but don't go overboard with the detail because we're going to really let the paint determine a lot of those details for us as you'll see um, when we keep painting here. The next step is my favorite. It's wet on wet painting. So what we're going to do is wet the surface of the paper everywhere we want there to be water in our painting. Um, so we're going to be adding water to the water of the painting. That's a little confusing, but that's what we're doing. So we're putting water around the fish, essentially. Now we get to add color. Now this is my favorite part of the painting we're doing today, actually, because the water that we have put on the page will pull the paint that we're going to dab on in little dots and groups and it'll pull the paint around and actually create a very um, free uh, movement with the water. So it'll, it'll make it feel like there are reflections and there are shadows and there's movement um, without having to do too much detail work, I guess. Uh, we just kind of let the paint do its thing and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll turn out really nice as long as you have wet watercolor paper. Um, and wet paint. You want that paint to be really saturated and your brush to be very full when you when you apply the paint to the canvas. Now I'm using um, blue and also a little bit of Payne's gray. I think that those two complement each other nicely and the gray um, hints at shadows on the water surface where the parts that are left white, the parts that don't end up getting covered uh, with the paint, they're going to represent the highlights. So it just creates um, a very lifelike but still painterly uh, a feeling. Next we add shadow. So again, we have to wait for the paint to dry, uh, but once it's dry, we can use a very diluted gray like we used for the water and apply it to the fish everywhere there's shadow. This includes over the parts that are going to eventually be colored. Um, this is giving us a foundation to build that fish off of. So it, we're, right now we're determining the shadow, we're, we're determining our highlight. And our highlight is coming in from the top right corner. And uh, that means that the shadows of the fish is going to be on the bottom left side, or the far left side on each fish. So you can see me just especially focusing on that left side and adding in just a little bit of shadow. And uh, this will help our fish feel a little bit more uh, three-dimensional and make a more dynamic painting. Um, I am going in and doing a little bit of detail on the fins. Uh, the fins are going to be primarily white in the end, so the shadow that we're applying will really determine how the fins look, uh, even more so than how the fish body will look. Just getting some of that detail around the eye, all of those little shadows. Now we get to add color. So once again, we have to make sure that we have a dry painting and uh, we are going to add water to the fish everywhere that we want the orange paint to go. This is the same process as we did with the water um, that we're painting. So just like we did with the water, we're going to apply kind of a pool, not a pool, but we're going to apply water to the paper so that it's wet to the touch and shiny. And uh, once we have that water in place, we're just going to dab color um, onto that spot. So I'm starting with a little bit of yellow. Uh, my fish is primarily orange, but I really like how the yellow can act as a highlight for orange. You can see here how the paint is just pulling with that wet uh, paper, and that's what we want. We really want a lot of movement with that paint. If your page is too dry, it's not going to look like that. If your page is too wet, it's going to pool. Um, but if you have if you have just the perfect amount of moisture in your page, it'll almost 
fan out like a snowflake and eventually it will take it'll cross over to the other side and complete the uh, center um, I'm adding a few spots to the center but uh, the paint should do the work for me and what that does by putting the paint on the outside of the fish where the shadows are and leaving the top mostly white we're creating a natural highlight and I didn't really have to do anything to make that happen the paint did it for me now we're doing the same on the other fish we're starting with our yellow um, and then we're going to add in the orange uh, again just kind of trailing along the edges and letting it bleed up so that we create that center highlight um, in the on the top of our fish to make the fish feel a little bit rounder uh, using a very saturated paint um, if you get too much water if you if you find it starts to pool you can pull it off with either a paper towel or a dry brush just make sure your brush or your paper towel is clean if you make a mistake you can also lift it up with a paper towel pretty much uh, entirely as long as you catch it right away so if for example you were to drop some paint on your on your uh, painting you could pick it up by just taking a paper towel and very quickly dabbing that spot where you made the mistake all right so now we have our fish with the orange color added to them and I'm just going in and adding a little bit more detail here um, but we're getting pretty close to where we let it dry and then move on to the next step. All right, so now we're going to add the spot to the fish. Now I'm just gonna add spots to the one on the left hand side. Uh, because I'm really liking how the one on the right is looking and I do want these fish to feel different. Um, so we're getting a very saturated uh, black. I'm actually using a Payne's gray and a black together because I don't like to use straight black and we're just dabbing it on like we did with the orange. Uh, but this time we're, we're using a much more saturated paint and the water doesn't play as much of a role here because we, we don't necessarily want a huge highlight in these spots. We want them to be uh, very dramatic and very dark. You can be a little more aggressive with this paint than we have been with the other paints. Um, you can apply water to the surface first and let the paint uh, kind of take over the fish like we were doing in the other steps, but that isn't necessary. I like to use a combination of wet on wet and wet on dry here. Um, it just gives me a little bit more control when it comes to these spots. Uh, put a few spots in the back. When you're doing a fish, you don't want it to be very symmetrical. Ideally, with a koi fish, they have a, you know, some spots are bigger, some are smaller. Sometimes one side is all black. There, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of different things going on in a koi fish. So I'm trying to reflect that in this painting. All right, now we get to add our detail. So I'm switching to a finer tipped watercolor pen and I'm just using the same black gray color that I mixed for the spots and I'm using a more diluted version of that for some of the more detailed shadows. We're just going straight onto dry paper here. Because we want these lines to be a little crisper, we don't necessarily want the page to be wet, otherwise it would bleed and get really fuzzy, like it did with the water. Um, and we want we don't want sharp lines here, but we do want defined lines. So that's why we're we're going straight onto dry paper with the paint. Um, and you know, you you're gonna want lighter lines and darker lines, so make sure that you get a little bit of variation in that. When you paint the little lines in the fins, try to make them spaced out differently from each other and make them different lengths. Um, just like you would draw highlights in hair, they all go in the same direction, generally speaking, but you don't want to make them all, you know, two millimeters apart each one. Like you want to clump some and leave some big spaces and that just helps the fish feel more real and more like it's swimming.
The eyes are probably the most important feature in almost any painting. Um, so really make sure that you spend time to make the eyes the right, you know, put them at the right spot on the face, make them nice and dark. Um, everything else can feel a little bit looser, but for me, I like to keep the eyes a little bit tighter and it gives you a, a focal point too in a painting. So even if you went very, very loose with this, which you could do, you could be a lot looser than I'm being with it. If your eyes are a little more refined, that, that can be quite nice. That's, that's kind of a trick I like to use myself. I'm just adding some more detail to the fins here. Again, making sure that there's a, a prominent shadow where the fin attaches to the body and that'll help it look more three-dimensional. Um, and again, help with the feeling of movement and realism. Uh, and now I'm just going back in with some orange and I'm creating scales on the fish that doesn't have the black dots on it. I felt like my fish was feeling a little bit bare, um, even though the yellow and the red really did blend together to create a nice, uh, a nice gradient on the back of the fish. It just felt too smooth to me. So I'm just adding some spots here and there. Um, these are just, these are wet spots on dry. So when they dry, they're going to look a lot lighter than this, but it will um, it will it will give the fish a little bit of texture and I'm feeling like it's needing some texture right now. I don't feel like the other one needs that texture. I really like how the black spots are breaking up the fish. Um, and I do want these fish to feel different from each other. So that's, that's my way of making this orange fish feel a little bit more special um, by adding those scale textures to his body. Just giving him a couple more little dots on his face again going in with some detail stuff this stuff it, this is a little bit more of a if you if you're a perfectionist you're going to really like this part of the painting if you're not you're probably going to want to just you might not even want to do this part we could have really stopped this painting um before we got into this more finer detail and it would have still been really good but i like to i like to um make things look a little bit more realistic. So I really appreciate the final touches, the, the little details that you put in at the very end of a painting like this. I hope you guys are enjoying your painting. I would really like to see, um, to see if what you do if you do decide to do a painting. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Creations by Kendra, or you can find me on Instagram at Okenedra, that's O-H-K-E-N-A-D-R-A. And, you know, if tag me in your paintings, I'd love to see how they turn out. You know, painting something you can do when you're sitting by yourself, um, you know, you, you don't need to be around people. So I think that art is great for our current uh, climate of social distancing and kind of staying in the house a little bit more than we maybe want to. Um, so I encourage you to try to do some painting or try to do some drawing and it can be very therapeutic if you're feeling a little stressed, you could just take out some of that stress on the page. Um, something like this I find very calming. So it's also good to do if you're feeling stressed, just to turn your mind off and focus on something that makes you happy and something that can turn out to be beautiful. 